He's not a cheap drifter, Daddy. He's a fine, decent man, and he loves me. What he loves is your money. My money. By God, I'm not turning the M-Cross over to a gut-eaten half-breed. We don't want your money, Julie said. You forget. I have money of my own. The 20000 Mama left me. That trust fund is for your education and for the time you marry a respectable man from a good family. You're a thoroughbred, and you weren't raised to run with the scrubs. We are scrubs, Daddy, Julie shouted. You and Mama started out poor and built what you have. Billy and I will do the same. Your precious Billy will keep you barefoot and pregnant with little mixed-blood papooses while you cook for his drunken relatives. The answer is no, by God, and that's an end to it. I heard a door slam, the sound of a table or a chair falling, somewhere inside, and then silence. Everything happened fast after that. I drove the wagon back to where Dobelly waited and went looking for Billy. I was on my way down to the corrals where most of the other hands were when Stubb Peterson rode up and stopped me. Stubb was wagon boss for the roundup that year, and he took his responsibility mighty serious. He looked puffed up and pompous as he pointed a stubby finger my way. The outfit's leaving, Fanshaw, he said. Roll your bed, get mounted, and jingle them saddle horses out on the trail. We'll camp at Coyote Flats this evening. My nod told him that I would. By the by, Stubb, I said, you don't know where I can find Billy Christmas, do you? Stubb scratched his belly and spat. Billy's gone, he said. Rode out early this morning with Waco Calhoun and Red Murphy. Billy was riding that gray of his and leading his pack horse. I don't expect he'll be coming back. I felt like I'd swallowed a cold rock. No, I said. I don't expect he will. Chapter 3 The roundup went off slicker than calf slobbers. By day I herded the remuda and did what I could to give Dobelly a hand. I helped hitch and load the wagons, helped set up and take down the camp, and rustled wood and water. When there was no wood, I gathered dry cow chips and a gunny sack and fetched them back to the wagon. Dobelly teased me some about that last duty, called it picking flowers, but he was mighty glad to have the fuel. Once or twice, when he had his hands full, I wound up peeling spuds and making coffee. Helping the cook was part of the job, but my main duty was herding the horses. I kept them on good grass, saw they were well watered and waiting when the boys were ready to change mounts. The night hawk was an old-timer I'd knowed since I was just a button, and I turned the ponies over to him at sundown. Then I ate supper with the punchers and bedded down until first light, when the whole process began again. Sometimes I'd pass the time of day with one or another of the boys, and I'd ask about Belly Christmas. Nobody had seen him since the day he rode out with Waco and Red, or had any idea as to his whereabouts. I stayed curious, but uninformed. 